Hi, it is Bia here. Um, I finally decided to do a full guide for this or full build for this. Uh, it turns out, uh, so there was a period of time where Profane Veil was bugged and it was giving way too much defenses. So I didn't think it was like worthwhile to make a build guide for this, mostly because I'm pretty sure a lot of people are not happy about this particular bug. But after this has been, you know, patched out, uh, the, the bug no longer exists. Uh, I think it, w it would have been a good idea to then talk about this build because I still think that it's one of the stronger builds I've seen so far. Uh, it is reasonably tanky. It has a base uh, ward of one point, oh no, twelve thousand. Sorry. Um, it has a pretty decent amount of damage. Uh, I can do maps and bosses, or rather monoliths and bosses later to show you. Uh, and at the same time, it's pretty stress-free gameplay. I don't think it's that complex. Like you don't really have to think too much. Uh, and yep. So uh, I think the great thing about this build is that you can definitely start it uh, as your first character and then you can slowly scale into it without much difficulties. I think that, um, you know, generally it's like a pretty strong build to, to start with because you don't really need anything special. You can just get it off the ground with very basic items. And then when it, even when you optimize it, a lot of the uniques that you're going to get that are like multiple LPs are generally accessible uniques. Right, to give you an example, uh, Shroud of Obscurity, Calamity, Five Starters Torch are all very uh, readily accessible with at least three um, uh, legendary powers and above. Right, so you can get three LP, you can get uh, four LPs, and you'll be able to get this uh, optimized this for relatively cheap. Uh, so, for this, I would definitely suggest uh, it's, it's more of a Merchant's Guild kind of uh, setup. I would say that you can definitely run this on COF, but with Merchant's Guild, you're more likely to be able to optimize it easier. Alright, without further ado, let me just do a particular map. And uh, do a monolith, and then you have a rough idea of how this build works. Hopefully it doesn't lag, because my computer is really old. It's not very optimized for this. As you notice, unlike most other Platonic Fissure bleed builds, this has absolutely no issues or mana problems. I'll sh show you the reason for that later. But yeah, pretty zoomy, pretty tanky. Even though I don't have cap res, I don't know. Single target is great when all the Chaos Bolts focus on a single target. In this case here, the, when there's trash mobs, it takes a bit more time until the trash mobs clear and then it will focus fire that single one boss or whatever remaining. Okay, this is a 600 corruption, pretty decent. I don't plan to climb above 650 I think. I think the benefits are not substantial enough uh, to pursue that. So I'm just probably just going to stay at 650 and farm. Definitely will be able to do like 800 plus without any issues. 
Um, just probably lazy. I don't think doing above 6 or 50 is worthwhile. So even if the build can do it, it's not something I plan to do. In fact, I'm probably more likely to just play another character after this. Okay, not as a boss. So, so I'll just give you a rough idea of bossing DPS. I'll just do this boss. And then I'll briefly talk about the itemization, about the, the skill choices and etc. Uh, I haven't really looked up other content creators per se, so if I'm a bit wrong, let's say, about certain things, you know, pardon me. Okay, I gotta clear the trash before I can get decent damage out. die about now Okay, let's talk about the build, um, give you a rough idea of how it works, etc. So basically, you are using uh, Catonic Fissure to spawn Chaos Bolts. You notice I barely cast Chaos Bolt manually. You only cast Chaos Bolt manually to do this, which is to extend duration of Catonic Fissures and to proc um, Bleed Overload. But other than that, you don't really actually press this as a button. Most of the time, you're going to be running around spamming Spirit Plague, just resets your Profane Veil uh, and to help you have more spirit plagues up. Uh, Catonic finisher, you just need to drop once uh, and then refresh it once it drops off. Uh, and then, yeah, Profane Veil is for getting your ward up, for tankiness, for dodging abilities. Uh, it's also really good for damage because you get a damage boost from this. And then, uh, all the zombies not on the skill bar because you don't need to press it at all, but it syn uh, synergizes with Profane Veil to give you uh, the minions to uh, be consumed and give you ward. Uh, there's also a good lot of quality of life with summon Volta Zombie, I'll show you later. And there are ways to automate it so you don't really have to think about it too much. Uh, so let's start first and foremost, let's talk about Spirit Plague and the skills. I'm going to go into detail here, I'm sorry, but I'm pretty sure I'll, I'll drop an LE Tools uh, profile so you, you'll have an easier time. But let me just talk like about the build itself and the skills so that it's you know, if you want a rationale for it, I think it'll be a lot easier, like, it's easier to understand where I'm coming from, so you don't have to overthink things, right? So Spirit Plague is just here for two reasons. It is a zero mana cost uh, curse, so um, it allows you to be, it allows it to be spammed. Uh, this is for Profane Veil. And also it's here to give you an uh, increased bleed chance, so 150% bleed chance uh, on top of whatever bleed chance you get elsewhere. It gives you ward gain as well, because how many times you hit a specific target, you're going to get ward back from it. So very good sustain, synergizes very well with Chaos Bolts because you're going to be hitting the, the target a lot. Um, play Burst is just to spread. You can get 3 or 2 in this. Uh, you need 2 at least just to get here, but you can get 3 or 2 in this and then add points elsewhere. I've just gone for 3 here. This is a good buff for damage. It's 15% of increased damage over time uh, with 13 maximum stacks. Um, you're going for these, this one and this. So you're going for this just to get to here. Perpetuity is because you really want the 60% cast speed here. Alright, uh, let's move on. Profane Veil. Uh, Profane Veil does uh, three things. It is a damage amp because of the 50% increase to uh, more damage to curse targets while concealed. So while you're in Profane Veil, you do 50% more damage with your ignites and your bleeds. Uh, and because you're dropping only uh, Catonic Fissure, it, the damage is still ramping up as you, you pop this, right? So this is a 50% damage bonus, uh, more damage bonus. Um, you also have this. You get this because you want to be able to refresh your Profane Veil as fast as possible. Profane Veil is insanely broken as a survivable me survivability mechanic. Even if it no longer gives you like, you know, 100,000 watt, it doesn't really matter because to be frank, uh, 
low life warlock already has pretty decent amounts of base ward uh, and then you can ramp it up to 20k which is more than enough uh, what you're using this for is mainly, mainly the permanent the 100 dodge so every hit you dodge right you have 100 chance of dodge uh, you only take damage from dot's you can somewhat mitigate it from this a spirit plate i don't think this works according i'm not sure if this works i, I haven't read patch notes but i if this works this would help uh, reduce your dot incoming dot damage um, you're also using Provane Veil for application of a curse. So Pendant's Curse, I think you can only get it here. Uh, more curses is more damage because you're a Warlock, 5% more damage. So that's why you're going here. You're going Heretic's Flame to turn this into a Fire Skill. I'll tell you why you're going to turn it into a Fire Skill. But for now, you can just remember Fire Skill good for this particular for this particular build. Alright, you're going here. Uh, this is to just to get the Vampiric Pool. So this allows you to consume your minions. Uh, then you'll consume up to 10, so you want to max this out. And then Apocalypse is to give you a cycling uh, amount of zombies. So I'll give you an example. Let's say there's two zombies here, right? See, so yeah, I've got four now. Wait, let me, let me get the cooldowns off. Okay. See, my all six of my zombies are up. Uh, that's what this does. All right, it allows you to refresh your zombies. I would say 4 is comfortable, so try to get 4 points in this. You can definitely survive on 3 points, but I would generally advise for 4 points. Uh, Catonic Fissure, let me go through the point distributions, distributions as well. Uh, you're going here, 1 point, 1 point, 1 point. You're just getting to here, because Forbidden Chasm gives you Acid Skin, which is another curse. As I said before, curse more curses, more damage. Your Warlock. Uh, Fragile Crust, you don't really have to add more points in this, because uh, you already manage your mana perfectly fine. Uh, without it, uh, but if you do find that you have mana issues, please add more to this and remove stuff from Fellfire. Uh, Fellfire is for Ignite Prolif, so whenever it torments a ignited target, it will spread the ignites up to four targets around it. So this means that uh, whatever ignites you're stacking onto your target, you'll be able to spread it around. This gives you pretty decent clear uh, amongst other things. So Staging Current is more damage multiplier. The more frequency of spirits you have, the more likely you more chaos bolt casts you will have right because you all 60 percent of all your spirits will be chaos bolts so if if you can take uh if you can like ramp this up so for example you have spirit frequency of 160 percent for example um 170 percent that means you're doing 1.7 times the amount of cast so this is basically your cast speed multiplier right so you want to max this out definitely uh, Gloom and Flames is to double the amount of spirits because this basically gives you a second uh, Catonic Fissure. Uh, that you want to max this out because you want to have the maximum chance to replace spirits with Chaos Bolts. Uh, you go here, it's just a path to here. So you get Fire sh Red Shred here. Uh, two Fire Shred. And you get Return Below. When spirits torment an enemy afflicted by an Infernal Shade, they consume the shade. So you remove the shade, causing it to instantly deal the remaining damage and increases the frequency. So this is another frequency boost, right? And it goes up to 60%. You'll probably ask where the Infernal Shade is coming from because I don't have Infernal Shade on my uh, on, on my skill tree, etc. But, uh, but I'll show you later. All right, now we go on to Chaos Bolts. So what is Chaos Bolts? It is your main source of damage. Chaos Bolts is the thing that is making you stack a high amount of bleed and ignite on the target, right? And, all, and you need to kind of like add points that kind of boost that so let me show you uh, exactly what points you add um, if you're only going bleed so if you're f first starting this out uh, in the cy cycle and you're starting a new character or solar cell phone or whatever you only get this you don't go ignite because you won't have ignite right so you can go a bleed a warlock build this is pretty standard you get max out uh, this one and then you get to this so sanguine reverie gives you necrotic the physical so you get your damn chance uh, becomes bleed chance so you have a pretty high amount of bleed from this as well as damn chance from other sources right this is where uh, low life really shines and you really want this uh, once you start transitioning the low life so uh, chaos bolts deals more damage over time equal to the portion of your missing health so if your mind missing health is like 2980 or something that means i'm doing close to 149 percent more damage or something right so 149% more damage or damage over time is a pretty sizable amount. Um, yeah, that's why you go for this. Anyway, we'll move on here. Directly cast and chaos bolts extend the duration of your active catonic fissures and infernal shades. Good quality of life. Uh, you press uh, chaos bolts once in a while. You're gonna press it anyway because of uh, a bleed overload. You need this to proc bleed overload. 
so uh, you know this extends your catonic fissures so you don't have to recast it again so uh, you go for this because this gives you another curse you don't have bone curse on your tree on your on, on your skills or your skill bar so you want an automated bone curse this adds another curse as I said more curses more damage right and then here curse blood this is probably like one of the other more important so this is like these three two points are like the best for chaos bolt uh, ailments and this is like the third best so what this does is that give, this gives you a refresh on all the curses on your target which means that you can only need you only really need to apply curses once and then afterwards this will just keep refreshing the curses on your target itself for bosses you don't have to keep reapplying uh, through other sources uh, devouter dam is extremely important as well uh, you need the mana gain to keep your mana at maximum this gives you the quality of life that you want uh, health gain against cursed enemies is a bit unfortunate you don't really quite care for it it does remove reduce your low life at times but uh mana mana is like crucial here uh seed of chaos is only if you are looking for clear you can always remove this point and add to this or this but uh, i've decided to go for this mainly because i feel like this is proccing significantly enough that i would want to use it in a map for clear so this gives me a 10 percent chance for this to chain essentially right it will proc on in on a target and then you will cast chaos boots from that target to another target because Chaos Bolts is already at like a mana cost of 2, this is basically going to be free. You don't have to worry too much of your mana uh, usage. Uh, you're going here for Abrupt Chaos. This is actually one of the more underrated uh, Chaos Bolts passives. I would advise that you get 30, the, the 3 points into this for the 39% chance for increased area. 116% increased area would mean that you're more likely to shotgun your Chaos Bolts. So if you see Chaos Bolts, pretty spread out at times. Uh, if you're bigger AoE, you're more likely to have the shot the, the the projectiles overlap and because you're more likely to have the projectiles overlap uh that gives you essentially a more damage multiplier so you definitely want to go for this hey last not least volatile zombie let me go into details about it volatile zombie is very very good quality of life i explain why because it does three things as well uh it gives you minion life so minion life for provane veil uh, consumption of all the vampiric pool uh it also uh has three different mechanics of uh, auto summoning so you don't have to actually press the button to use this this makes it easier for you to go through maps or do bosses without like limit without like dps downtime um, so what you do is you go oh and the last one it, it helps generate water cell from its own deaths it has a cull so 16 percent kill threshold it does apply mark for death so it does a crap ton of things you, you can also spec for fear so it does some form of crowd control as well so here you, you part it here, you get Necromantic Fervor. Uh, this gives you uh, a zombie life. So the zombies when they die, 0.8% of their life is basically given to you as a healing. You can change that into Ward, so that gives you uh, even more Ward. Effigy, effigy of com on Combustion is for Inferno Shade. Auto casting a com Inferno Shade. And why you want to auto cast Inferno Shade? Uh, one is a fire skill, so you're already going to reduce the cost. It's only a mana cost of six, really low. And two, because you're going to use uh, Inferno Shades, you're going to consume the Inferno Shades with Catalonic Fissure to get frequency, which is more damage. So that's why you have this here. Uh, these two points are only because I'm using Cycle of Putrescence. That gives me levels if this is a damage over time uh, minion skill, and only this skill point allocated will make this a damage over time minion skill so you add this here because the two points are basically free but you can ignore them if, you, if i were to remove these two you'd see the levels drop down to 20 and uh, i won't have these two but that's all um you're going up here mostly to uh access the nodes up there you don't really actually care about this these two nodes they're just for parting uh you go one here and then one here so this gives you a chance to summon uh, a big zombie from indirect cast so 10 percent of the zombies you summon will be big zombies uh what is a big zombie uh i have to maybe uh proc one okay so you see this big guy over here that is a big zombie they have two right down here this means they have double the life which means they give double the ward yeah so that's only 10 percent of the time uh but it's still consistent enough for me to like want to add this uh, you want to go here as well because you also have a chance for additional zombies when, when you have indirect cast so that means uh, you're more likely to have like the full stack of 6 zombies up uh, and you're more likely to over summon so when you over summon zombies this means that uh, you will get zombies expiring because the over summon zombies will replace your existing ones and then that will cause them to die and then that will cause extra ward healing so good quality of life over there 
you're parting here these two points are not really important i mean the stun charge is nice but mostly going to here uh, for the cull so this is 16 percent more damage because you kill stuff at 16 percent threshold really good for bosses uh you go here as well uh mostly the path to here uh mark for death is super strong mo mostly because uh extra curse your warlock right so this gives you five percent more damage this also is a pretty sizable resistance shred 25 percent reduce all resistances uh and you can keep it up permanently because of cursed blood so there are lots of synergies in this build uh to uh, work to get that work together to create a pretty uh, i would say a pretty complete build let's talk about the itemization because i think that's also extremely important First and foremost, you will see a bunch of 3 and 4 LPs on this that seem pretty unattainable. But I'll tell you straight up, you can kind of skimp on these. You can get like 3 LPs instead of 4. Uh, it's not required to get the 4 LP versions. It's just because I can afford them. As you can see, I have still have 72 million uh, gold. I haven't really spent on anything like major. Uh, so I know some prices have gone up pretty significantly. 4 LPs or 5 starters are now like a million gold. But they used to be 200,000 at some point. Uh, if you can't afford a 5 starter with 4 LPs, you can go for 3 LPs, pretty accessible because you only care about 3 mods. Anyway, let me go through the itemization to tell you exactly how to itemize for this. Uh, Calamity, 3 LPs, you can get this for under 200,000 gold, it is super cheap. Uh, all you really care about is chance to apply damn on hit, increase life. Uh, bleed duration is good too because it's more damage but, but only for bleed alone. Uh, Shroud of Obscurity is basically the poor man's exsanguinate. Uh, exsanguinous sorry uh, it is the poor man's exsanguinous because a equivalent 4 LP exsanguinous is going to cost you upwards of a billion gold and I'm not joking it's a highly sought after item it can be used by many different uh, you know, other classes as well other than acolyte so a lot of people want this for low life or want exsanguinous for low life this somehow manages to go under the radar because one it is uh it is an acolyte only armor too. Uh, people look at the 30 percent missing what gain as uh, missing health gain as what they're like. Whoa, I'm losing seven percent. That's so unfortunate from exsanguinous. But the, to be honest, like that seven percent is worth having four LPs. If you were to buy an exsanguinous uh, of the equivalent value, you're probably only going to be stuck with two LPs. And crafting is going to be pain in the ass because you're not going to get the mods you want. So I would still think that this is much cheaper. Uh, you only need really want the th you only want really want three mods on this. So you want increased spirit frequency, at least a T6. Uh, you want to apply damage hit, at least a T6 as well, or T7. Uh, and then uh, increased health. You want that uh, T6 or T7, T7 depends on your luck. Uh, but yeah, I managed to get a four LP here, so I got a pretty nice one. Uh, for the fire starters torch, this is the reason why chaos bolts are too cost, right? You need at least uh, a T6 on the spell uh, cost, on the spell cost prefix to get it to minus four. So that gives you a minus eight, and that sets your chaos bolts to two. Uh, you can probably get by with uh, T5, which is a minus three spell cost. I think you can definitely get by with it, but I would generally advise for a T6. Um, in this case, buying a LP3 is probably attainable for most of you. Buying LP4 is just pretty much out of the way uh i think it, unless you've got the currency for it or the gold for it right um then you need to find stuff like uh decrease so, so the increased damage over time i would usually advise that you get it uh just craft it on t5 or something you usually want something that's uh, you want the mana cost is a t6 uh you want the chance to ignite is a t6 the fire pen also you can have it t5 it doesn't really matter so why this is really good is not just the mana cost, it also gives you 41% more fire damage to uh, enemies affected by spreading flames. You're going to be able to apply spreading flames pretty easily because you have uh, you know, a crap ton of chaos bolts, right? You're going to hit multiple times, uh, spreading flames is always going to be up, you're going to have 41% more damage for your ignite, so this is super nice. Uh, the 4% movement speed is good quality of life as well. Uh, let's cover amulet. Amulet, you just want minion life. This is to get your minions uh, as high a life as possible. So when you consume them, you're going to have more ward. I only consumed two, so this is pretty low amount of ward. Anyway, yep. Uh, damage over time prefix, chance to ignite suffix, chance uh, maximum life suffix. You can definitely swap out the life for uh, resistances. I just didn't want to. Uh, I would advise that you get a frailty, a chance to apply frailty on the sealed, eff the sealed, sealed affix, the sealed suffix. Uh, because one, 
you don't really need it as a T4 or 5. T1 or T2 is enough. And so if you get one, just seal it and then craft on something like life. You definitely want this on a bone amulet base because of the physical and necrotic resistances. Uh, for f shield, I have considered most uh, re was it relics or off hands. And I will tell you straight up, Flayer's Pride is probably the best here. Flayer's Pride is the best because it gives so much. It gives you 13 intelligence, which is the same as a uh, offhand. It also gives you 73% chance to bleed and 33% or 30 plus percent physical penetration with bleed. Um, the reduced damage taken on block and DOT taken is also really, really good. Uh, and I think a uh, LP2 is going to cost you maybe about 500,000 to a mil right now. And uh, the only thing you really care about on the, the the LP is minion life and flat life or maybe all resistances. So it's very easy to get one. You can even LP1 it and just get minion life. Uh, and, and you know, you should be fine or good to go. Psycho of Putrescence is unique. Uh, you want this here to be able to respawn summon zombies automatically. As you can tell, uh, it's here for like if you have two of them, it it'll basically spawn two extra zombies when all of them are dead. So let me show you exactly how that looks like. They resummon. I'm consuming them again. Resummon, consume. Resummon, consume. Resummon, consume. And this is the extra spare. As you can tell, I've just consumed ten uh, zombies, even though there was only three at the start. So even though there's only 3 on the field, I ended up consuming 10 zombies. Why? Because of Psycho Progressions. There were 6 zombies at the start. I consumed an extra like 4 more just off Psycho Progressions alone. So that's why this is like a super good ring. It, uh, it just so happens that this is also probably the best base for us. It has Necrotic Resistance and what, what they create Threshold. Uh, getting LP2s is pretty cheap as well. About 100,000 gold to about 200,000. And the only things you really want are Int and Minion Life or int and resistances or mini life and resistances up to you um belt is a bit hard to get and come by uh this is the other way you summon zombies so six ball zombies summon on potion use uh so that means that whenever i press my potions i'm gonna summon zombies this allows me a oh shit button let's say if i'm running around my zombies are not near me and i really need the profane veil i just do that and pop my flask and i'll eat all the zombies and get a high amount of ward so this is a very good quality of life belt. I would definitely advise this over a unique belt. Uh, I think generally you would need too many, you would need too many rolls for this for a unique belt to make sense. All right, let's put it that way. Uh, that kind of means like a rare belt is probably the most ideal here. Uh, if you get one like this, that's pretty much all you need. Um, yeah, that's pretty much about it. Okay, let's talk about gloves. Gloves void. Now the Crusader Gauntlets is for Void Resistance on the Prefix. You need as much self exist as possible because your self exist are basically life and life is damaged because of the uh, low life uh, mechanic. Yeah, so you definitely want current health loss per second and missing health game as ward. Uh, it synergizes with both your Shroud Obscurity and your last steps. Uh, this gives you basically a maximum ward, a uh, higher amount of maximum ward. You definitely want this at least to be a T6, but if you can get a T6 or four, a T7 or a 4 to T7, you know, this is uh, probably best in slot. Uh, you want int, cast speed, hybrid life, and a resistance here. Uh, I managed to snag this one pretty cheap. I think it was 7 mil, and I crafted a bit. But yeah, uh, probably the most expensive item I have here, actually. Because the chest with LP4 for me was like 6.6 .6 mil or something. Uh, last steps of the living, you only need to get a LP1 and then uh, just craft on either movement speed or a haste mod. This is for mobility. Uh, haste while after you uh, traverse is like super super good quality of life. So yeah, uh, pretty easy to get. I would say that this is the cheap, th th this and this, both of them are like the cheapest items to get on this build. Uh, along with maybe the Calamity because uh, they all cost like really really cheap as a base It's usually the rings that are more expensive to craft Flayer's Pride is a bit expensive and the LP4s are obviously really expensive And this is, this glove is obviously expensive because of the mod Just to help you curious, same thing, you only want LP1, LP2s are just too expensive Profane Veil 4 is too expensive as well, it's like 1 mil per pop And you're gonna be burning through like, I don't know 4 on average before you get the one you want <laughs> So, yep, uh, look, definitely look for uh, one that has high amount of increased health as the prefix, as implicit. Uh, the 
prefixes and suffixes don't matter so much. It's the implicit that matters the most. Uh, his increased life just helps you so much. Uh, profane Veil 3 is pretty cheap. So, yeah. Increased damage over time is nice too because it's generic. Applies to both Ignite and uh, Bleed. Alright. Let's talk about passives and blessings. So we go... What? Why do I have 3 on... Did I mess up somewhere? Why do I have 3 points? <laughs> uh, weird. Oh, yeah, because I unspec this. Uh, because this is bugged at the moment. Anyway, uh, let's see. Probably will add into more int. Anyway, yep, there we go. Uh, let's continue. Uh, Blood Aura, mostly for this. Blood Pack gives you health drain per second, which get on, on more on like uh, clearing where you're clearing maps, uh, monoliths. You want the health drain to keep yourself at perpetually low life. On bosses, it's not going to matter so much because you don't really uh, have that much life gain from boss hits, so you should be fine. Uh, forbidden Knowledge, Int is nice, Necrotic Res is nice. Uh, you want to go for this sort of path to get the this. On Natural Preservation, you get Water Retention, Necrotic Res, and Poison Resistance, so really good. Uh, for Lich Side, you want to go Int, you want to go uh, the health leech uh health leech mitigation or not mitigation you want to completely remove health leech from your character so you don't get like above low life so you go for this uh dance with death you're always on low life so this is going to be 105 percent uh increased damage pretty substantial 16 int is obviously really really nice so that's why you're going for this on the warlock side you have uh spike with the kf5 you have culture of blood for bleed overload you have Ocaldus Mind from Max Mana as well as Int. Uh, you want more of the Malevolence uh, just for the Water Decay Threshold. For this as well, so Water Decay Threshold per 1% Necro Res. Uh, you get pretty high amounts of Water Decay Threshold. I have about 960 or something. Uh, Doom Herald, this gives you 24% more damage when you are channeling. And uh, Profane Veil is a channel. So during duration of Profane Veil, you're going to be doing 24% more damage just off the passives alone. Uh, Ignite Overload is great too because uh, it gives more damage for Ignites. Uh, int, obviously, because you're stacking Int. Uh, less damage taken from Wither targets, great, because you take less damage. Uh, extra Curse, more damage because you're a Warlock, you know, 5% more damage per Curse. Path to here, you didn't get to here. Uh, Vessel of Chaos is for increased damage over time and more damage per Overload. You have 1 Overload and 2 Overload, so that's 6% more damage. Uh, Flinging Crone is for mobility because you have a chance to get haste from kills and hitting bosses and rares and you have increased haste effect so this is really good quality of life uh, and then finally here aspect of death which I heard isn't working so this is a bit unfortunate the 3 point bonus actually doesn't work you are just uh, <coughs> damning yourself that don't and you're just adding damned uh, stacks to yourself which hurts your survivability and uh, you're not getting any damage from it so <laughs> um, this is bug at the moment. If they fix this, yeah, add three more points here and get uh, like fifty percent more damage or something. But uh, you know, if you since it's not fixed yet, I don't know why they fix the profane build stuff, but they don't fix stuff like this. But you know, who am I to complain? Anyway, yeah, that's all in all uh, about the build. Should be able to clear up to eight hundred corruption easily. One thousand corruption is a bit pushing it, but I think it should be fine there. Um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'm gonna leave the uh, LE tools. Uh, What's it called again? The link in the in the description. All right, see you guys. I'm out. Bye.